you reap is what you sow! traditions in UWA Elite collide. It is Saturday night at the Middlesex County Fair, and it is Crossroads, and that is Fire Liger, UWA Elite Original. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Colin West, joined in his broadcasting UWA Elite career by Prince Hawkins. No, I can't believe you're here. I cannot believe you're here. Thank you, Colin. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be in my own new tradition here at UWA Elite that started something new. And how about Fire Liger? I haven't seen Fire Liger in years. Well, uh, Fire Liger doesn't seem like he's dove in the ring in a couple of years. <laughs> happens to the best of us. It certainly does. Now, you have to be, I know we're supposed to be, you know, non-partisan here, but being that uh, Fire Liger is a foreign talent by way of Romania and I believe Morocco at one point, maybe Zimbabwe, I'm not quite sure, uh, are you pulling for Fire Liger in this matchup? Well, you know, the forum guy's got to stick together, but I'm not going to be that biased unless he's up against the Patriot or Hacksaw or something like that. Then what have I got to be biased about? Okay, you should be fine, but here is... Oh, that's not Hacksaw. No, that is not Hacksaw. That is uh, a guy who's shaped somewhat like a 2 by 4 though. This is the young shooter, Jordan Oliver, who has had one of the more impressive weeks here at the Middlesex County Fair. Looking for a hot... Oh, I think he's just picking a fight with the one guy smaller than him in the show 10. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You go after the kid in the stroller? Really? Oh, okay. Now, um, you know, I think he could maybe beat, uh, beat up all of these kids. Maybe in Nintendo. Maybe, you know, maybe on the DS. Yeah, but all jokes aside, Jordan Oliver, legitimate, legitimate shooter, legitimate young star here in UWA Elite. I don't want to sell him short because he has, based on the performance that he's given this week at the Middlesex County Fair, as good a chance to reach the Crossroads Tournament Finals as anyone in this triple threat matchup. And speaking of which, here comes participant number three. But he suffered a torn rotator cuff, so someone Wait, from the bracket will be taking his place in this match. Do we have a substitution call? We do. King Christian apparently tore, tore his rotator cuff earlier this week. I didn't know he wasn't cleared to compete, but... Oh boy, the music is indicative of who's coming out of the turkey here. This changes everything. The returning American Horror, former member of the Wretched with Bones. My goodness, Massacre finding his way back. Redemption in the Crossroads Tournament for Massacre. Looking about as good as he's ever looked. Hasn't been in UWA Elite action in about 10 months thanks to being retired by his former best friend and compatriot in the Wretched Bones. Now Massacre has a chance. He wasn't even a part of this company three weeks ago. Now has a chance to make the finals of the Crossroads Tournament. But to do so, he will have to go through the veteran fire liger, the young upstart shooter, Jordan Oliver. This ought to be a contrast in styles for the ages and a great way to kick off this Crossroads Supercard, Prince. What are you looking for in this oh, match? Really? And Massacre, you know, of course he's got a chance, but more than anything, maybe he's got the most to prove here. Of course, the young Jordan Oliver has a lot to prove, too, and Fire Liger. Wait, Fire Liger might be proving something right now, Colin. Oh, he's scolding that young boy. No, he said, you, re room. you remind me of somebody. 
Mario Zudo, maybe? I'm not sure. Well, the fans seem to know who's referring to as the Justin Bieber oh, chant yeah. once again fills the tent here at the Middlesex County Fair. I always get those two mixed up. No, music cute, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> okay, and Fire Liger calls for Girlfriend by Justin Bieber to be played over, over the audio here. And Jordan Oliver may just take himself out of the tournament. Jordan, get back in the ring. It could have been worse. It could have been baby. Come on, get back in the ring. I don't know if it could have been worse. Is there any such thing as like a worse Jordan, Justin Bieber song? I will say Jordan Bieber. Jordan Bieber. I that, that's that's Jordan. That's Jordan Bieber. There you go. <laughs> All right, UWA Elite Army. I expect to hear that at upcoming shows. But right now, first time ever matchup here between Fire Liger and Maskers. I think Jordan Oliver has just left the premises. This could be a ploy, Colin. You know, that might be his best chance at winning a match like this. No, Jordan Oliver cheating? No. <laughs> he's using his brain. He's braining. Ah, and there's Fire Liger using his brain. Again, this is the one thing that Fire Liger has over Masker. He might not have the physique. He might not have the mean streak. But he knows how to have a good time. And he does have years of experience over the American Horror. Coming in with that fist. No. Oof. Oh. Right in the mask, oh my goodness. Right in the mask. I would say right in the mush, but but does does a, a masked wrestler have a mush? Oh, it depends on what's underneath, probably. I suppose. <laughs> well, Fire Liger doesn't look exceptionally mushy, but right now Michael Masker in firm control of this matchup. And talking about something very interesting that could happen, first cover of the matchup, two count for Massacre. Very interesting that could happen in this Crossroads tournament. Should Massacre advance, Bose has a chance to advance to the finals as well, and both halves of the former Wretched. As Masker going for his finisher almost immediately blocked by... Oh, there we go. back. Oh, good. Oh, Shows up. That kid knows how to make an entrance. He sure does. Showing up unannounced like most rashes I've had in my life. And Jordan Oliver gets a two count. Now goes into the cover on Massacre. Somebody's bound to be down. Come on, keep going, kid. One, two, no. And Jordan Oliver... Going for his fourth cover in about five seconds Should here. Pin Massacre first. He fell from a greater distance. I think it would have made a difference. Mm. Or maybe not. Maybe not. But you know, be when... that as it may, if Massacre were to win this matchup, could find himself in the finals with the man that he probably wants to see the most and get some retribution on, that being Bose. But we have a long way to go, and right now Massacre does not look like the favorite in this matchup. Getting whipped across the ring hard. Jordan he Oliver oh, rolls through the oh, hip toss. All his weight into that. My goodness. Now off the ropes, big leg drop from Jordan Oliver, who makes up for his lack of size with extra tenacity. Puts a little stank on that leg well, drop. I think about it, Colin. Have you ever been hit by a kendo stick? It's not a very big weapon. It's a very tall and narrow weapon, like Jordan Oliver's whole physique. And it stings. So Jordan Oliver stings. He's stinging Massacre right now. And he's put a little vice grip on there with that headlock takeover. Oh, but not for long. Now Massacre with the reversal into the head scissors. Jordan Oliver, jackknife cover. And a two count. Jordan Oliver right back on the offensive. And I got to tell you, the young shooter looking pretty impressive early on in this matchup. Ooh. A little more power than I expected to see from him. A lot more power, and that's the tenacity. He's learned, I think, in his first year here, full year in UWA Elite, how to, much like a, a worker like King Tech, manipulate his size along with a little bit of height to generate a little bit more torque where he might not have the strength. He does have a leverage advantage over a lot of guys he's in the ring with. Now off the ropes, wait, Fire Liger. Woo! Fire Liger assists Jordan Oliver into the bridging German, and then up. Bridge falling down right there. No, 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 not today. <laughs> the crop top offense from Fire Liger. Back to, oh boy. Oh, <laughs> Well, one of the meanest chops in the business. Welcome to the business. Team. Seriously, reminiscent of, of, a, of another. I, I'm blanking on him, but reminiscent of another massive chop from another UWA. Oh, wait a minute. I think Firelighter just challenged Jordan Oliver to a duel. Oh, no, ten paces. Is that ring big enough for ten paces? A uh, ten Jordan Oliver paces. Oh, yes. Oh, it's oh. exploder into the corner. Goodness. And Jordan Oliver has been exploded. 
One, two, and five. Oh, I thought Fire Liger was moving on in the Crossroads Tournament. Massacre usually would rebound and recover from the onslaught from Jordan Oliver a little bit sooner, a little bit quicker than this, but then again has the... Oh! Spoke too soon. I was going to say, now he might have a mush collar. He didn't have it before, but enough impact turns anybody into a mush collar. Yes. And Michael Massacre now, again, has not been in the ring with UWA Elite before this week in 10 months. Well, and where has he been, Colin? Well, he's been retired. He was really just fired unceremoniously last year. Eric Corvus versus Massacre in a loser must retire match. Double pin. Both men were taken out. Both men were retired. And we haven't seen either one since in the ring. I've seen Eric Corvus on commentary. Oh, a little strange that he's not here. Called me earlier and said that he was having some kind of car trouble. But, be that as it may, I'm glad to be here on commentary with you, Chris. Right, my pleasure, thank you. But, you know, Massacre, he might have, he might have some ring rust here. Oh! So, let's be okay right now. What? <laughs> to move, please! Oh! Smack! Oh my goodness, Manhattan drop. Looks like he's stuck in Manhattan traffic right now. Whoa! Oh! Throws him into the delayed German! Wow. <laughs> and that kid is a... Uh, well, that kid is a non-issue right now. Yeah, seriously. Liger and Massacre. Jordan Oliver may be out of this matchup for good, and now Fire Liger laying the boots into Massacre like he owes him money. But he seems, he seems a little bit out of breath. That, that worldly style. Oh, Ooh. takes him around the world into the DDT. And now a stretch. Oh, the shooter. him. Little shoot him. Shooter with a modified, almost a seated octopus stretch here, hammering away on that rotator cuff of Fire Liger. I'll tell you what, the young shooter right now, Michael Massacre can't recover in time, may have this one. Oh! Massacre has a way of making me look... Oh. Has a way of making me look dumb halfway through a sentence, doesn't it? <laughs> Certainly does. Now, you ready for this one? I've never said this or heard this before. All three men down center of the ring, turning point in the matchup. Anybody's game right now, Colin. It is. I gotta tell you, each one of these men impressing me in a different way. Oliver stepping up against two veterans. Massacre looking in the best shape of his life. And Fireliger hanging in there against two of the younger guns in UWA Elite. It is anybody's ball game right now, but Massacre is back to his feet. And maybe that 10 months off allows his win to be a little better, allows his recovery to be a little stronger. Well, you know, I think he, he was building to this day. It would look silly if he came back after 10 months, put on, you know, a couple hundred pounds and was all out of breath and not doing nothing. But he looks to be in control right now. Well, I don't know any wrestler who's ever done that. Well, you know, 2012 was a rough year for me, Colin. But this isn't about me. No. This is about, this is about Massacre, and it's all about Massacre as he's in control. Oh, my goodness. Hooking him in now. What in the world is he going for? Oh! I don't know what he was going for, but now Massacre, Hangman into a Falcon Arrow! Wow! Rips down like a plastic yeah. bag. Apologies to Kyle the Beast. Massacre might- wait a minute. Why is Fire Liger taking- OH MY GOD! Oh, there's your answer, Colin. <laughs> this isn't traffic! Ladies and gentlemen, this is Eric Corvus, and the only man who didn't know was Massacre! Rocks him with the palm strike, and in two! You call it what you want, the clock strike, the downfall, the mechanism! Eric Corvus is here! Has Eric Corvus been Fire Liger the whole time? All around the world, he's been Fire Liger? No, I, I, I mean, we have... lied to me about his miles, Colin. Oh my goodness! Be that as it may! That, let's not bury the lead. Eric Corbis has advanced in crossroads and he's got the money. You that don't know who I am, my name is Eric Corbis. They seem to know who he is. Those of you that don't know, this man massacre and foes ended my Italy career in UW Elite. Door. This was my way back in, not to win Crossroads, no, but to get my revenge on you and to get my revenge on foes. Consider this a chapter closed. We can watch this now or we can do it forever. Well, Eric Corbis laying down the gauntlet, fight forever or squash the beef now. 
It's been five years since these men have shook hands in any... Oh, my oh. God! Something I never thought that I would see in a UWA Elite ring. Massacre, Corvus, squash the beef, and now Corvus moves on. You heard it right. He doesn't want to win Crossroads so much as he desperately wants to end this chapter with Massacre and Bose. Hopefully we get a word from Eric Corvus later tonight, but as of right now, Prince, who would have thought it? I never would have guessed it, you know, and he's fought the beef, but don't worry, I think another beef is right on the way for Eric Corvus. 2016, Eric Corvus in Crossroads. Next up is our second Crossroads semi-finals match scheduled for one fall. Ladies and gentlemen, still shaking off the shock. Eric Corvus is in the finals of Crossroads 2016. Colin West, Prince Akhenaten here with your second Crossroads semi-final triple threat matchup. And this music can only mean one thing. Trouble is on the way. Exactly. <laughs> the veteran well-traveled. Any match that this man is in is going to be a treat for the fans, and I don't think it's really going to be a treat for his opponent. No. The Iron Man. Champion. It, uh, and the belt's not been reinstated yet, but he calls himself the Iron Man champion. He brought the championship back because to Arcadia, it represents something. It represents a bygone era. Guys like Mike West, Brian Brass said he's got the mic. I hate when this happens. Cross your fingers that I'm uh, I'm gonna be here in five seconds. Oh. I'll hold you back, Colin. Thank you. You do not do an amp job introducing me. Colin West. Uh. What? I know that we've been through this and you know the right things to say. So get in here and introduce me the right way. If you're leaving the booth, Colin, pick me up some dirt from the fish. Alright, I'll be back. He's right here, right there. I'm not sure what that piece of paper is. I'm new here at UWA Elite, so I'll ask Colin if he makes it back here. And if not, it's the Prince Akhenaten show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would ask at this time that you all please rise and remove your hats. We are about to be inspired by the presence of the only active member of the UWA Elite Hall of Fame. Oh, take off your hat. I got my crown off over here. The only man in history to win not only the UWA Original Championship, not only the Crossroads Tournament, but the UWA Elite Championship as well. He is the only man in history to win the prestigious Jersey All-Pro Wrestling Best of the Light Heavyweights twice. Not Sami Zayn, not Kevin Owens, not Ricochet, only Arcane. as the single greatest in-ring competitor in the United Wrestling Alliance history. The perfect plan of natural God-given ability and impeccable work ethic. The most underrated, underappreciated wrestler of his generation. And the single most important man in UWA elite history. Colin, come on. But nonetheless, no introduction is necessary to Arcadia, but if I had all those accolades, I'd want that type of introduction myself. I would demand it. 
If this crowd wasn't hyped to see this match before, the band better be hyped now. Otherwise, they're all going to have to read that introduction. Ten times. They are more than welcome to read that introduction, but I'm getting very, very tired of doing that. While it's true that Arcadia has accomplished all of this and more, we all know it doesn't need to be said, and by God, I hope this man puts a stop to this. Yeah. Drake Chambers, one of the few men that I think can actually take out Arcadia on his way to the Crossroads Tournament Finals. And I'll tell you what, the Dragon Slayer, now the Dragon Board, Drake Chambers has been on a hot streak since his rebirth a couple of months ago here in UWA Elite. I think he might have what it takes to pull the upset here and get Arcadia out of this tournament. I was one dragon born in the rebirth. Did he hatch or something with this fair? Did he back this way? Is that what we're doing? Uh, I have it on, uh, I have it on good authority. He doesn't even eat eggs. Right. Oh, well, Lactose problem. Great oh. change. I don't need to know the digestive history of every competitor here tonight, Colin. But it's okay. 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 Sure. And here comes the wild card in this matchup. And he is wild indeed. A man who is just coming into his own. Just finding himself. Post Kentucky bread. This is Lucas Finnegan. Lucas the king of skirt style, Prince Uh, You know, I've, I've, I've always had a problem chasing skirts, and I don't always like what I find underneath, and I really don't think I like what I find underneath tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, you can find outside that skirt by the end of the night. Shocking enough, is the Crossroads Thermit Trophy that you just saw over the left shoulder of Lucas Finnegan, and again, as acclaimed as Arcadia is, as talented as Drake Chambers is, you don't gotta beat both guys, you just gotta get a three count or a submission. So Arcadia, on his quest to proving yet another another accolade in his career, becoming number one contender to the UWA Elite Champion, might not even factor in the decision here. It might also be survival count if it really comes down to it. Especially with an Iron Man like Arcadia. I like the Iron Man's chances. Well, it's true, he does have that 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 reactor core in his chest. <sighs> But Tony Stark is not here tonight. Chambers, Finnegan, Arcadia lighting him up with these forearms. This looks like a practice session for Arcadia right now. Off the side ropes. Now, he well, needs two back elbows of his own. And now Drake Chambers saying to Finnegan, maybe we need oof. to team up to take Arcadia out of the picture and then may the best man win. Oh my goodness. Ducking the Inziguri, someone else hitting the Inziguri. That's it's a little known uh, Three Stooges uh, exchange right there. Really? The three from, their, from their later work. You know, three Stooges and Inziguri? Yeah, Larry, Larry had a great Inziguri. Few people know that. A big delay suplex into that corkscrew skirt style elbow from Lucas Finnegan. Getting the crowd fired up, but he should be concerned about Arcadia. Oh! Ooh, those knees hung up, and you take the knees away from Arcadia, you take away so much. You take away the springboard offense. Uh oh, he's uh -oh. tucked. He Shout out Gargano! Oh. He was tucked just like underneath the, ha the skirt of uh, Lucas right there. I would say that most things uh, about Lucas Finnegan's style do involve some level of tucking. Oh, should have tucked his head there. Drake Chambers, ah, oh, but Drake Chambers eats a double axe handle to the back, and now Arcadia, oh, uh, oh, Chambers flips over the suplex attempt, tries to bury a kick in the gut, flips again, and delivers oh. a big knee strike to the chin of Arcadia, follows it up, wheelbarrow, up, down, oh! oh. Victory is fleeting. Oh my gosh, Victory was fleeting with the victim kick to the back, and Arcadia, early in this matchup has both of his opponents really. This is the matchup, these two men in the ring right now, that Chambers has wanted for years. Prince, he has wanted his one-on-one -on -one shot with Arcadia. He's not quite getting it tonight. But in talking to Drake Chambers, for years now, I know the man that he emulates, the man that he... Oh, wow! Very big surprise as Arcadia takes out Finnegan on the outside, but the man that Chambers feels like he needs to go through surprise is Arcadio! You know, maybe it's good that he doesn't eat those eggs. He flew a little further. That's true. I, I, I have nothing. That just seems accurate. Seems scientific. I'm cool with it. As an egg eater, I would have no idea. You've never seen me flown like that. Now, referee Ryan T 
applying a 10 count here. Now, there is no count out for one competitor or in but a triple threat. <laughs> Absolutely. In Crossroads Tournament rules, if none of these men get back in the ring by a count of 10, no one advances to the finals from this bracket. So, it could be a one-on-one -on -one match if, yeah. at the end. It could very interestingly be a one-on-one -on -one match. That's why uh, there is no disqualification in a triple threat, obviously, but in this situation, there can be count-outs because if no man advances, then Crossroads Finals turns into a triple threat elimination or, like you said, a one-on-one. -on -one. We've seen all sorts of crazy things in this tournament. We've seen Joey Adams and Massacre get two chances at the tournament, both go 0 for 2, and now we're seeing strike for strike, Chambers fitting it. Oh man, and Arcadia, I can't tell if Arcadia over in that far corner is just catching his breath or he's really that hurt, but no, oh, Arcadia goes oh. for that springboard drop kick. Boom! Oh. My, goodness. My goodness, and now, right now, Drake Chambers in control. Rolling through Whoa. into a monkey flip on Finnegan. Chambers is on fire right now. And if he keeps this up, the man that we've called the high-flying heartthrob may well win. Uh, again, this is just the night of making Colin look stupid halfway through a sentence. I'm sticking with it. Oh, man. Stomp go through by Arcadia coming into the corner. Oh, Whoa. Chambers with a low drop kick takes out that left foot of Arcadia who just spears himself head first into the middle turnbuckle. Oh, here comes the dragon boy. Oh, right in the scales. Low scales. Low scales. Yes. Pump handle! Oh, what long blower! And that's usually it! That's usually it! Finnegan upset of the- Oh! That would have been the upset of the tournament right there, Lucas Finnegan. He is the dark horse in this match, I do have to say. Black Irish? Well, you know. Yes! <laughs> Man, oh man, I, I expected high impact, but I didn't expect to see all three men down, basically starting from scratch in this matchup. Very much so, but Arcadia, as is his want, back up to his feet, back in control. Now, looking for that's got a driver. Finnegan reverses out, looking for that's got a driver again. Chambers, springboard, big. Big kick right to the, well, he doesn't wear a mask, right to the mush. No, that is an, uh, an undisputed mush. Undisputed mush. My goodness. Wait, Chambers! Ooh. That's it! That's it! Two! Oh, oh man. I mean, Jesus just two. Wow, that is one of the weaker kickouts you will ever see in your life. Credit to Lucas yeah, Finnegan, though. No. That's all that matters, Colin. That stand, that shooting star press. Off the canvas has put away and many a man. The map, what's he gonna do from up here? And well, the, we know. We're looking at the Dragon Slayer coming off the top rope. If he hits it, it's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh Finnegan oh, out of the way! And it still might be a wrap. It still might be a wrap. This could be Finnegan's night. Who could have thought it? Or it could be Finnegan's wake if he comes out that thing. Oh, oh my goodness! Now Arcadia. Oh, Arcadia! Shoves Finnegan unceremoniously off the top rope. Chambers is down. And Arcadia is waiting to pick off his prey right Yeah, but which guy is he going for? Is he going to line up Chambers, line up Finnegan? Either way, if he hits this. He'll be a magic bullet. He'll go through oh the my goodness. Springboard. Drop. No, oh misses the drop kick. Up. Float over. Runs through. Chambers. Oh, that's two. Catch Arcadia Napping. No! Shot to the head! Package! That's got a driver! Oh. And just like that, Arcadia advances to the chagrin of most. A game effort from Drake Chambers. A valiant effort from Lucas Finnegan. But this match at a birth in the crossroads finals belongs to Arcadia. Back. Back to the incubator for Dragonborn. My goodness. Two more matches left. Two men. Eric Corbis and Arcadia, two of the cornerstones of this company, will I'm meet already, in the Crossroads I'm Finals. i sold, Colin. Take my money. We will be back in just a matter of moments with more Crossroads.
Next up is our third Crossroads semi-finals match scheduled for... You heard it from Rich Reed. Let's keep this party going! With more Crossroads semi-finals action. Prince, Prince Akhenaten. One fall, another triple threat matchup. This one, perhaps, in the eyes of many, the most intriguing of our semi-final triple threats. And that woman is not in labor. She's just running from the wretched that is Bones. Oh, goodness. What's wrong with this guy's face color? Uh, it's not his face, actually. Rumor has it, it's about eight different people's faces. That makes me feel less than better. That didn't make me feel better. Oh, that wasn't helpful? No, no, not really. Well, I'll tell you what. I feel very comfortable right now the further away that the wretched foes walks from me. And I'll tell you what. Joins now on commentary, Eric Corvus. Fireliger. How are Nah, Fireliger, I've heard. It's just a one-time thing for you? I, why, why wouldn't you tell me? Listen, why would you not tell me? Myself and Horatio, who you all know as Firelight, yes. are very, very good friends. I helped train him in the CPW Showcase. He injured himself in his first round matchup, broke his tailbone, Ugh. wasn't able to move forward in the tournament, or was about to pull out and be replaced by somebody else, just like we saw with Kid Christian and Michael Master. I went to him and I said, I saw it as an opportunity, a match with Michael Massacre at Crossroads. I asked him if I could borrow his wrestling gear and portray him in the semifinal. And he said, see, yes you can, Corbis. And I went out there and I got my revenge on Massacre. And the reason that I am sitting with you in French right now is because this match, if Bones wins it, will give me an opportunity to not only put to rest Massacre, but to get my revenge on the man that caused it all, the wretched Bose. Well, all due respect, Bose, one of the most dangerous men in UWA Elite, but he's got two guys in this matchup who could very easily take him out, the professional, professional wrestler Nicholas K, who has already defeated Bose this season, and I would argue the breakout single star of this fair, Brandon Kirk. Making a semi-final crossroads appearance, doing it all by himself and looking very determined as he walks into what ought to be the most hard-hitting semi-final matchup of this crossroads tournament. Now, Prince, I know you're familiar with all three of these men. Do you see anyone as having an advantage here? Well, you know, Brandon Kirk as a single star is new to me. I'm very familiar with Nicholas K, and I'm just terrified of both. I, mean, mm. I, I, I have to give the advantage to him, just in, in you know wet spots in my pants alone, out of fear. As, as, as you should be, Prince. You should be scared of a man like that. That's a man that I shared the majority of my 2015 with. However. Nicholas K, one of my best friends in professional wrestling. Brandon Kirk, the most accomplished tag team wrestler in the UWA League, along with Jeff Cannonball on the road. I take nothing away from either of them. And as a commentator, I have gotten used to just looking at it down the middle and not taking sides, but I cannot be, I have to be biased in this match. Bose is the man that I am here to get my revenge on, and I hope to God that he wins. Well, I hope to God he doesn't. I'll tell you what, based on 80% of this crowd, I'm shocked the RTF chants are <laughs> off the charts here. The fans seem to really want Brandon Kirk to win this matchup. As Brandon Kirk goes into the cover, Nicholas K, and now we see the triple threat come into play. But I'll tell you what, regardless of them breaking up each other's pinfalls, no way that a man as wretched as Bose was going to be done for that quickly. And now, with Bose taking a little bit of a break on the outside, two of the men who take the most pleasure in beating the crap out of people are about to tee off on one another. For the first time ever, I have ever. never seen Nicholas K or Brandon Kirk sharing a ring in singles competition or tag team competition. Oh, and they are and Nicholas K. Oh, it's oh, it's oh, Kirk, oh, look at that! Oh. Kirk up and over, Ooh. big kick. And Kirk is every bit of six foot two, six foot three, two twenty. Look at the agility. 
Kirk is not the, the type of superstar that you look at. Oh, on his leg! On his leg! Oh, what impact! Kirk is not the type of guy you look at and take into consideration how agile he is. Mm. I just don't think he's gotten an opportunity to show it moving forward and, and Bose needs to get himself back into the ring if he has any hope of winning this match. I think. Ooh, double shark fin to the face! And another one! And they may look a little silly, but damn, do they hurt Eric Corbis. You've taken a shark fin to the face from Nick Kay. I wouldn't necessarily say they look silly. It's not like he's putting his, his hands together and making a legitimate shark fin. It's two grown oh, oh. man hands hitting you right in the face. And he just hit Brandon Kirk with his dorsal fin on the apron over there. Whoa. Kay. 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 And going back up top, oh, but oh man, he was picking his spot. I can't imagine how anybody oh. could ever say this, but Nicholas K and Brandon Kirk forgot about Bose. Forgot no. about six but five he's not, three hundred. He's not afraid, Nicholas K. He's taking it right to him. No, Bose is not Dr. Dre. There's no forgetting about him. Well. Nicholas K, two kick. Oh. Thank you. So you well, would, you would have been disappointed if one of your great friends won this match. Because like you want both listen, that bad. It, it's not personal. Nicholas K coming off the top rope, maybe not a situation you're used to seeing Nicholas K in. But yes, he is one of my really good oh! Oh! Yeah, almost put through the center of the ring. One of the few men on this planet who can make a sidewalk slam into a legitimate finisher. Uh, Bose just has perfected that sidewalk slam and has made it deadly. Deadly effective, and now it's just a poke to the eye of Brandon Kirk. And it, it's almost like you can you can read the adjectives you would use to describe Bose on his singlet: chaos, morbid, blood, agony. Oh, are those people those, agony? Are those things that people scream out when they take that sidewalk slam? When they take that backbreaker? Unbelievable. Oh, he, I have actually seen Bose put away people with that backbreaker, and I was really looking forward to Bose putting Kirk away. And listen, I, I know, I know, I know you guys talk about my bias. I, I know how, 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 but it's a, re it's a reverse bias, Eric Corbis. You're cheering for the man that you hate the most because you want to face him in the Crossroads Finals. Whereas I, I, I feel like there's a very rare thing Ooh. happening here. Oh, just impact. It's just like getting... It's like the brick wall running at you. And now oh. Kirk Yakuza! When does the brick wall ever run back? Game changer! Brandon Kirk! Flipping DVD! Man! Brandon Kirk! But now K! Oh, with that spike! And it's over! Oh my god, Nicholas K stealing! Oh. I didn't know if that was it. Nicholas K hitting Kirk with the hard way. Bose able to break it up at the last second. Think about all the other things that I should be worrying about. The fact that Arcadia advanced. The fact that I have to face off with Arcadia later. But the only thing I can concentrate is Bose. I can't help oh, that. Oh, Bose backbreaker. One, two, and no. That's a, wow. You look at Nicholas K just pound his fist into the canvas. He's frustrated he through that pain. Look at the top two words on the back of Bose's singlet. Pain, misery. That is exactly what Kirk and K are right now. Well, they do say misery loves company, and that's what Bose is trying to get done here. Shout out to Los Oh, oh another big Yakuza kick from Kirk! How many people have you seen Kirk defeat with that exact Yakuza kick? And the big man's already up to a, a two knees already. Oh, no. Kirk! Oh, no! K runs in with a big forearm. And now a headbutt right to Brandon Kirk. No! Oh, oh boy. Seen him. Oh, oh no! Oh, Kirk with the Yakuza! Now! Who got the dumps one? out! But now Bose takes advantage of Kirk's oh, Yakuza! Yes, yes. Be careful what you wish for, Corvus. I'll tell you what, Brandon oh. Kirk is responsible for the victory, but Bose picks up the win. The intelligence, maybe the underrated intelligence of the former good doctor turned wretched butcher, and Bose will face Arcadia and Eric Corvus. I did not come here for a reading test, or an eye test reading is for nerds. But morbid, it says it right on the singlet. My this is goodness. exactly what I wanted, Colin. 
Prince. I came out here. I wanted to witness this with my own eyes. I have a lot of things to prepare for. You guys enjoy the rest of the show. I have to go get ready for revenge. Well, that's all from Eric Corvus, but there's much more. One more Crossroad semifinal to go as this super card continues. Next up will be our last Crossroads semifinals match scheduled for... One of his matches should be seven falls just to really screw with people. And speaking of screwing with people, you know, I have a record going. My falls count nowhere matches technically still going on. God! Indefinite falls count nowhere matches. Man, oh man, this is of all the matches in the Crossroads semifinals. They've each been unique for a reason. This one's unique based on the disparity between the three men involved. You've got the baddest, arguably the baddest beast in the woods. Going up against the roughest roughneck from Kentucky. Yeah. Going up against the broiest bro in the gym. Yeah, look who it is. That is the sure thing, TJ Blade. One third of the trio's champions. Tag Team Combat Cup winner. And later tonight, the bro team pack take on the Unstoppables. Don't, don't let the one sign fool you, Prince. He is not right. Oh, one more sign than I ever got. Really? And what is that for you? This is a Tag Team Combat Cup trophy, and TJ Blade will let you know about it. He's got a trophy and you don't, Prince Hagenaten. Oh no. I feel inadequate over there. Yeah. The thing I hear is this commentary table leaving my vacuum. Oh, you got the Zapolis. I can see them. They're right in front of me. And this isn't covered for wearing my beard, did so. Never mind. Hey, look at this other competitor making his way here. Clay Sawyer. The patriarch of Kentucky bred with his trademark moonshine, but without the stars and bars, because we might get sued for that at a fair like this. Clay Sawyer. Probably the baddest man from Moonshine Creek. These are two very cagey, nefarious gentlemen, both of whom are part of two of the most successful factions in UWA Elite history, but in order to make it to the finals of the Crossroads Tournament, they're going to have to go through arguably the most dominant physical force in the history of this company. I hope you got your moonshine ready, Clay. You're going to need it. Nearly nefarious does not mean handsome. Oh. oh. Yeah, that's pretty much every time he comes through that curtain, that's the reaction. And we're, we're almost out of doors. There's grass, there's grass on the field, and Kyle is about to play ball here. My goodness. Kyle the Beast. Do you think he's not for livestock at this fair? I think he's going to affect him in some way, positive or negative. I feel like he's eaten, or at least taken a chunk out of most of the livestock here at the Middlesex County Fair. Eight a goldfish. Is that what you got here? Yeah. Wouldn't you yeah. vote him best in show? In my mind, the favorite to win this tournament, Kyle the Beast Wine. <laughs> man, oh man. And you look at this. You thought last match was hard hitting, putting Clay Sawyer and Kyle the Beast in the same ring, and then you add in possibly one of the cagiest, most intelligent men. Most, most devious for sure. In TJ Blade of the Bro Team Pack, this ought to be very, very interesting. Again, what is on the line? One of these three men will meet, bar and count out, Eric Corbis, Arcadia, and Bose in what is quickly becoming the most stacked Final Four in Crossroads Tournament history. That is a ticket. I'm, that is a ticket I might not want to receive. You know, be careful what you wish for. Like I told Corvus before, Corvus gets his wish. He'll be in the ring with Bows later on, along with Arcadia. That's that's a tough road to hook. Huh? I'll tell you what, it absolutely is. Revenge sometimes blinds you to what you really oh. want or need. Eric Corvus wishing for a date with not only Bose but Arcadia. But I'll tell you what, if anybody's equipped for the challenge, it is the man who's won all but one title there currently is to win in UWA Elite. That is unbelievable athleticism. A reverse springboard double clothesline. That needs more adjectives. I know, seriously, that's longer than my Starbucks or Kyle the Beast. 
throwing a shoulder into both men. My goodness. Hey, just oh. Oh. everything Kyle the Beast does has that added extra just brutality to it, that extra measure, that extra ounce of just hatred and just ferocity. Now standing swift by Kyle the Beast, and that's where the dichotomy of Beast comes in. Kyle Wynan is still in there somewhere, the man who's the most technically trained in the palace is there. But the Beast comes out to play. And you don't see a man that size do those things. But now, in order for these two men, either one of them, Play Sawyer or TJ Blade, to win this matchup, they are going to have to do just this. Team up. Oh no. I feel like this just might make the Beast mad as TJ Blade does his stepper exercises. Chris, that is not a wee fit. Come on, TJ. Whoa. And you notice on that right shoulder of the short thing as he takes off his shirt. That brace. He hasn't had surgery on that shoulder yet. He's trying to keep it in place so he doesn't have to. But I'll tell you what, the competitors like Kyle the Beast and Clay Sawyer, that brace might as well just be a giant red and white bullseye. He's gonna rip it right off and dip it in buffalo sauce, you know. Look at this! Oh, Kyle the Beast runs off both men in the corner. Larry! Larry! Whenever I commentate a Kyle the Beast match, 90% of what I have to say is oof. Seriously? Oof. All the food references, you're the one with Zabalus. <laughs> Thank you. You want one? Oof. Wow. Clay Sawyer almost getting a near fall on Kyle the Beast there. TJ Blade breaks it up with a drop kick. Now TJ Blade controls Kyle the Beast, which is something that I feel like can't last too long because nobody controls the Beast. Wow! What a big southpaw lariat takes Kyle down to the canvas. One, two, and an authoritative kick out from Kyle. As TJ Blade looks to be a bit frustrated, if TJ or Clay Sawyer is going to win this matchup, you have to assume that they're going to have to do it quickly, and they're probably going to have to do it without Kyle factoring into the decision. They got to... They gotta tie him to a table outside. He's had a one-on-one -on -one match. That's the only way. Whoa! Mm. That could have been better. Ooh. Oh, and Kyle swung for the fences about going Sawyer. Yeah. Oof. Whoopee cushion. Ow! Ow! That guy was kind of just me. I feel with that show that almost everything Blade is doing is just gonna hurt him more. He looks kind of beat up. Oh, and Clay oh. Sawyer, first guy to kind of go for that side. He went for the face, but he almost caught that shoulder. TJ Blade now really just a tiny bit. Rolls in over. Oh, a big atomic drop, and TJ Blade out of the ring. Well, joined the fire liger on that list of broken tailbones. TJ Blade is legitimately butt hurt outside the ring right now. You think Kyle the Beast's tailbone broke in his tail? Oh my god! This again! Springboard second row cross body block. A man with 267 or some odd pounds should not be doing that. Now Fireman's carry with these, but TJ Blade! Whoa, what what do we have there? No way! Oh! Samoan drop and DDT simultaneously by the Beast. Oh, it was the championship. Whoa. It was the trio's championship, and Kyle says, hey, I don't need this. Yeah. It flew. Oh, my God. Is he going to play Sawyer's not a small man? Goes with a jackhammer, but Clay Sawyer lands a knee. Oh, my God. Ooh. Ooh, what a German from Clay Sawyer. First, the agility to land that knee on the top of Kyle's head going for the jackhammer. Then a German, then a running strike. Floats into the cover. Two, no. TJ Blade has probably broken up at least a half a dozen hitting combinations in this matchup. Like a third party candidate. Messing it up for the other two guys. What are you saying? He's got no chance to win? Wow, double like underhook. I didn't like his chances before, but he's the only one who's like moving around. And here we go. Kyle Mutt, the equation to it. Clay Sawyer swimming in ropes. You gotta wonder if Clay Sawyer was pulled right slightly in towards the center of the ring. TJ Blade might have stolen this matchup. TJ, don't get distracted. You got a chance. Work on Sawyer. Now Clay Sawyer turning around. TJ Blade picks him up on the one shoulder. Big, big driver power slam combination. You look at it. Landed on the right shoulder, and TJ Blade is out of it. He might be eliminated. That was 
Spiffy Paul. It was Spiffy for the Kentucky Roughneck play Sawyer. And now, Sawyer trying to do the same to Kyle. Kyle shoves him off, catches the boot, spins around, kick, hooks him. Now, beautiful jackhammer count to a million. Kyle, the beast. And ladies and gentlemen, what a throwaway this is going to be in the final. Eric Corvus, Arcadia, Bose, Kyle the Beast. Four men that many people would consider the Mount Rushmore of the United Wrestling Alliance Elite is your Crossroads Tournament Finals for 2016. Who will get revenge, redemption, glory, and most importantly, the UWA Elite Crossroads Trophy and number one contendership. It could be that man, and we'll find out later tonight. The Beast advances here at Crossroads. Crossroads tournament semifinals weren't prestigious enough. Prince on it, obviously. The tag team championships are on the line between one of the most beloved and one of the most nefarious tag teams in UWA elite history. Nefarious means ugly the way you say it. Yes. Who will take one step closer to joining the ranks of the legendary, like the Rhodes and Swag Mean, as some of the greatest tag teams in this company's history? With a win and a retention, the Unstoppables could do so, but in order to do that, they're going to have to get through these men. Mike Seaway, Dynamite Davis, the Trios Champions, the Tag Team Combat Cup winners, the Protein Lemon Protein Pack. Like he did Wade earlier, and uh, one has to wonder if he will play a factor into this matchup. Uh, I gotta tell you, I think he might actually be still knocked out from tangling with Kyle the Beast and Clay Sawyer. Well, you don't ride a tilt at all after you tangle with Kyle the Beast, even though we are his lovely friend. How are those zappers? Yeah. Yes, they are. It's fantastic. I'll tell you what, do you look at the physique of Mike Seaway and just the upper body build of Dynamite Davis? Two very accomplished athletes here. Dynamite Davis, former Crossroads Tournament winner. He is. Yes, but in order to become the first ever combination tag and trio champions in the history of this company, they are going to have to go up against John Rome and Brandon the Bull. The fun love and very dangerous, unstoppable. And Jay Wise is here too. Only the tag team titles are on the line here tonight. This is correct. This is just a tag team championship opportunity. Brandon is unstoppable, one of the most beloved men in the United Wrestling Alliance. And because the Pro Team Pack won the Tag Team Combat Cup, yes, this is only for the Tag Championship. So, all the Unstoppables can do here is retain. They cannot win the trio's title. But very interesting, for the first time since the formation of the Pro Team Pack, as Brandon Bull and John Rome come out here with Jay White, Technically, the Bro Team Packers are the 3-2 to two disadvantage. It has never happened before. It's going to be very interesting to see how the BTP deals with that. As referee Austin Mitchell in charge of this matchup, holding the prestigious UWA Elite Tag Team Championships. Like I said, it's been held by some of the greatest in this company. Eric Corbis, Michael Massacre. Robbie Roller and Ben Grayson, Steve Monster, Mac, Low Life Louie, Ramos, The Rogues, and now one of these two teams will continue to cement themselves in the legacy of the United Wrestling Alliance.
going to be very, very interesting because the, you know, the strength advantage goes to the pro team pack. The height and weight advantage goes to Brandon the Bull, and all the experience goes to the 13-year veteran John Rome in this matchup. So a lot of factors differentiate these two teams. It's going to be very, very interesting to see whether size and speed and the Unstoppables, as John Rome asked the crowd to give him some heat, can deal with the cheating ways and just the brute strength of the bro team pack. Well, Colin, it's like lifting weights. If you have a bar that's not balanced properly, you're not going to lift it all that well. And the bro teams, they know all about lifting those weights. You got one big bull on one side, one little room on the other side. That's not a balanced bar, Colin. Well, um, I've never lifted weights before, so I'm going to take your word on it. Well now, John Rome now going in, pulling in Dynamite Davis early on in this matchup. Big knife edge chop, and John Rome is going to have to keep the tempo up here oh. if he wants to survive against okay. Dynamite Davis. Go to Dynamite Davis in to, try, in to try to get a gut kick there. Rome rolls him up, but there is the strength of Mike Davis. You could do that too, Colin, if you started lifting weight. I could, I could do that too if John Rome lost 100 pounds. <laughs> And there's Mike Davis doing squats, center of the ring, trying to get in the head of John Rome, who has had about enough. Goes into the sunset flip. Too close to the ropes. Yeah, too close to the ropes, but I think John Rome was just sending a message there saying, hey, don't screw around. We're the champs, and we will take advantage of any opening that you provide us. Now, double backslide opportunity. Roll out big, big southpaw forearm. And again, Dynamite Davis, the southpaw, the lefty, former Crossroads Tournament winner in his own right, but now John Rome comes off the ropes hard with a forearm of his own. It's about sending messages there. Ooh, sending messages back and forth, and John Rome is a regular postmaster general right here. Ooh. Hashtag stamps. Floating into the cover, superstar John Rome gets a two count on Mike Davis, but very, very important here for Rome and Bull to set the tone early, to dominate the action, to take the bro team pack away from their strength, which is being on a vertical base, and that's just what Brandon the Bull does here with a float over onto the canvas. Briefly knocked out from that super kick. He looked like he uh, was a little dizzy bit there for a second, but he seems to be back with us now. Well, nobody has ever accused Dynamite Davis of being completely with us, as Brandon the Bull again showing some amateur wrestling tactics, and when that six foot six 310 pound frame just falls on you twice. The wind's gonna get knocked out of you no matter how good your conditioning is. Ooh. And a third time! There's the wind just hit us from that big impact. Right there. Fans still to come on this broadcast. King Tech, the leader of the UWA Elite Army, challenges I champion Joey Adams in a chairs match for that title. Hedges invokes his rematch close for the UWA Elite Championship against Sean Damage McNellis and then the Crossroads Tournament Finals. But now, John Rome trying, trying to gut wrench over Dynamite Davis. That's not working just because of the size differential. Looks like a tag. Yep, does look like a tag. I don't think John Rome saw it. No, in fact, I don't think he, I don't think he saw it at all. And Seaway comes in. No way. Seaway's taking his sweet time getting in the ring here. Hey, Ryan T wouldn't let this crap fly. Come on. Well, that is Austin Mitchell. And give Austin Mitchell credit. He's got a lot to deal with here. But you see Seaway. John Rome does not know. Does not know a tag has been made. This is very interesting here. Oh, no. There's no way. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. John Rome. John Rome trying to... Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, boy. Well, there are certain things that you can't even really... You can't even really talk about. There's no, there's no give out there, Colin. I mean, oh. you know, there's not a John Rome shaped hole in the floor that had no, that had no give whatsoever. I'm surprised there's not a John Rome hole sha shaped hole in the earth right now. That was hard impact, and now the legal man, Mike Seaway, taking full advantage. John Rome is really, really hurt, and this might, and not only that, it's going to be hard to get out of the grass stain. That's very true. Well, that's the power of tide, Prince. But Seaway laying him in right now. John Rome does not look like he's on this planet right now. 
man! He was in the planet for a minute there. He was, and look at the weakness. We are barely three minutes into this matchup, and the weakness of that kick out from superstar John Roman. This is a man who's done it all. Multiple time tag team champion with different partners. Former Iron Man champion. Done it all here, UWA original, but he is in a bad way. You talked about the height and weight advantage on the John Rome brand in the book. A lot of good it does him when he's on the apron. And you heard Seaway say it. That's why he's the one fit wonder. Modified seated blockbuster. Seaway into the cover two and no. 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 John Rome just stargazing, but he managed to kick out. Well. Jeez, some people gaze at stars, some people gaze at moons, but right now John Rome trying desperately. But look at the strength and the fitness of Mike Seaway, big standing power slam, lot like, reminiscent of the British Bulldog, Seaway into the cover. Bit lackadaisical, probably should have hooked a leg there. Yeah, Pensac, you, can, you can't get caught, even if you do knock him in through the planet and out of this planet, you can't, you can't take anything for granted with somebody like John. Absolutely Rose. not, but look at this. The longer this goes, the frequent tags from your trios champions, they might become your tag team champions, and the more they just focus on the back. But you see, Dynamite Davis still worse for wear from that suplex himself. It couldn't have been easy for him either. No, both these men taking a lot out of them. This may come down to who's freshest between Seaway and Brandon the Bull as Mike Davis and John Rome both look very much worse for wear in this matchup. John Rome just can barely keep his eyes open at this point. You got a big bull caged on the outside. You better keep him there if you want to win this match. Otherwise, it's not going to be that great for the bro team. Uh, John Rome may be running on instinct. Ooh. The flying shoulder tackle to Seaway. Both men down in the center of the ring. Turning point of this matchup. I really have never said that before. <laughs> Not in the last couple minutes, no. But you look, John Rome Not still team. holding that back. And he sees Brandon the Bull. I don't know if he's going to be able to get there. He's got a big long arm. I would think it'd be easier, but... Oh, tag is now made. Davis gets and the tag. tag. Brandon gets the tag. And now Brandon the Bull has been uncaged. Dynamite Davis, a little worse for wear. Big Lariat from 6'6", 310, Brandon the Bull. I thought you said he was 6'4 before, didn't he? No, 6'6". Six, six. Oh, lost a mental back turn. And Mike Seaway castrating the Bull right in the middle of the ring here. My goodness, John Rome worse for wear. Brandon the Bull, the victim of the low blow. And now at this moment in time, wait a minute. Oh, there's TJ Blade. Oh no, with the trophy. No, but Brandon the Bull catches the trophy. You got horns on your head. Isn't that an advantage enough? What do you need a trophy for? Referee Austin for Mitchell for participation? No. Oh no. Uh oh. No. TJ Blade's been touting this trophy. Oh, oh no. He broke it. That trophy cost between four and nine dollars. I mean, forty-nine dollars. I was wondering why there was a bull. And look at the enraged protein pack. Now trying a double vertical suplex. Brandon the Bull reverses! Oh boy, but you look, Brandon the Bull calling on John Rome. John can barely do anything. Look at that, he's laboring just to walk across the ring. Oh boy, and now, boy, if there's anything scarier than watching Austin Mitchell try to referee a tag match, it's Brandon, Mitch it's Brandon the Bull going to the second row. Oof. Now, if Brandon the Bull were to fall out, there would definitely be a Brandon the Bull-shaped hole in the ground. I, I think there would be an earth-shaped hole in Brandon the Bull. Oh, no. No! Oh, my goodness. That was such impact. Austin Mitchell bounced. My gosh. Just a two-count, though. The resiliency of Brandon the Bull, who you see flexing that left arm, trying to get feeling back into that left arm. And this thing is completely devolved and broken down. Credit to referee Austin Mitchell for letting these four have it out in a championship contest. And no, Spike Seaway into the corner. Or it might just be the referee doesn't know the rules. You know. No, give Austin Mitchell a little more credit Ooh. than that. Oh, that's a big lariat. That's usually the end of things. Austin Mitchell wants there to be a definitive winner. Bulldozer! Don't forget about the giant. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Rule number one, don't forget about the six foot six kid with the horns on his head. Seriously. No, he's reviving his trophy. TJ Blade giving mouth to mouth to his tournament trophy. 
Oh, and a big gut punch right into the center of Seaway's midsection. Now, oh, oh. Uh, Austin Mitchell almost <laughs> caught in the crossfire there. This thing, wow. Look out, James. Oh! Gore from Brandon, and that'll do it! Oh. Wow, this thing was at times messy, at times scandalous, but give the Unstoppables credit. Big celebration for Brandon the Bull, John Roman, JYSD. Exactly. Yeah, but here's the thing. They beat the Bro Team Pack at their own game. The Bro Team Pack tried to muddy things up, tried to muddle things, tried to confuse the referee, and the Unstoppables just did what they wanted to do. They played the Bro Team Pack's game, and they were victorious. I'm stunned at this. It's a huge win, potentially the most important win in the career as tag champions of John Roman, Brandon the Bull, and after months of domination, Seaway, TJ Blade, Mike Davis, the Bro Team Pack, come up empty here at Crossroads in their quest to become double champions. Wow, it's Brandon the, Brandon the Bull's calling for the microphone, which is which is scarier than the grass stains on John Roman's back, I'll tell you. Can he speak with that hook in his mouth? We'll find out shortly. Five belts would be too many for the protein pack anyway. They don't need it. It's unbalanced. Protein pack, you guys are the trio's champions. And we just beat you. Therefore, if I'm not mistaken, that puts us first in line for a shot against you guys. And I want your belts. Wow, Brandon the Bull laying down the reverse challenge. They need a partner though, don't they? Huh? Is JYD's their partner? JYS might be three partners. Oh. We'll see what they have in mind here. We accept if with the tag titles on the line again. Yeah, with the tag titles on. No. Where did you go, bro? Are you scared? Yeah, well, here's a huddle from the Unstoppables. We beat you once. We have no problem beating you again. Ah! By the fire from John Rome here. Yes, that's a tank, you know, right? <laughs> me and Bull know ladder matches very well. But I don't think you three know what a ladder match is. It is! We know ladder matches! I think we should have a five-title ladder match! Five-title ladder match! Pull on the ladder? Now I've seen everything. Wow! Well, here's David Swan to clarify. I respect everybody's intensity and everything here. The fact of the matter is that the Unstoppables don't book matches here. That's right. The Rose right. Pack don't book matches here. But I can't help but notice that everybody here seems to like that idea for a ladder match. Is that the Holy Trinity Church in South River, New Jersey. It will be the protein pack putting the trio's championships. And out there, JYs and the Unstoppables and the, the protein pack just got what they wanted. And I wrestle! And you double championships in a ladder match! Double championships! And all the way across the sky! Oh, what does this mean? We go, I think in a strange way, all six men, as much as the protein pack doesn't seem happy, Sex County Fair tradition. Oh, there's some Civil War survivors there, Colin. It's an honor for these 147 year old men to be here at UWA Elite Crossroads. And 
first, the challenger. 13 years, the leader of the UWA Elite Army through everything with this company. It's Hartney looking for, if you can believe it, his first taste of singles championship gold. He is King His Civil War swag on the king from the kingdom. Oh, 13 years, no taste of gold. What does that tell you? It tells you to get out. He is the no, I don't think I can agree with U that, Prince. W -A -R Why is he stabbing that ground? What did the ground ever do to him? If John, but, if John Rome stabbed the ground, I would understand that. Yes, but he's marking his territory. The King, the leader of this UWA elite army, for years a tag team specialist. For years, his goal has not been championship gold. It has been to, to, to defend the land, the pride, the honor of this company from all invaders and challenges. He is beloved by this fan base, whom he affectionately calls the UWA elite army. And now... King Tech has his chance at the I Championship. Very justly and very rightly, the championship of the people here in the United Wrestling Alliance. But in order to do so, Prince, he's going to have to go through one of the most sadistic, twisted, dangerous, and unpredictable men ever to be a champion in this company. The man who led a rebellion against this company just last year, the I champion, Joey Adams. I champion, that's a super active title. Does mean they have to do whatever the fans tell you? But I don't see Joey Adams in play. Well, this is the interesting thing. Ever since Joey Adams became I champion, those interactive rules have vanished. He has said very clearly, I know what's best for you. I know what's best for this company, and most importantly, Joey Adams knows what's best for Joey Adams. Annihilated King Tech earlier this week here at the Middlesex County Fair with a chair left him laying in a heap, and now a chair's match for this championship. You may not like Joey Adams, but Joey Adams loves this title. It is a smack in the face of all the people who, have, who he claims have abandoned him, all the people who he claims have left him hanging for so many years. And now this People's Eye Championship of UWA Elite in his hands is about the sweetest victory Joey Adams could taste. But I'll tell you what, in order for either of these men to taste championship victory tonight, they're going to have to sweat and bleed and pay the price to retain it. This is a chairs match, Prince. And you've been involved with steel chairs in the ring before. That I, I, Explain to someone like me who's never been hit with a steel chair just how that feels. Well, it ain't no satin pillow, Colin. No. You know, it'll, it'll scramble your circuits. It'll, it'll make you sleepy or worse. A steel chair to the head, it really should end a match. It shouldn't be a focal point of a match. But this is why I like Joey Adams now. And I like his chances here. He's motivated by the hatred of this UWA army, as they call it. These entitled, spoiled brats. Oh. They can tell wrestlers what to do. They've never laced Joey Adams' boots or wrestling shoes or whatever he's wearing right now. And... And I, I think it just motivates him to show the fans who's boss, although Tech is kind of showing him who's boss at the moment. That's very true. Two men could not be more diametrically opposed in this locker room. King Tech works for these people, sweats for these people, trains for these people. Joey Adams works to spite these people. And with this particular championship on the line, it's just, I mean, I hate to say it, sometimes wrestling at its best is about a great story, and that is a great story. King Tech is no king of mine. I'm royalty. I would never oh. work for these people. These people work for me as royalty, as a patriarch. Are you, are you just mad that he outranks you, King to Prince? No, 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 I'm gonna be it. But still, that's not the point. I'm prince of a whole country. He's king of, what, the fair? What, he rode the tilt the work too many times? The kingdom of Clark! 
Kingdom of Clark. Yes. Like the candy bar? No, not like the candy bar. Well, it's a about, distinguished province in the not, in the municipality of New Jersey. If it's not a if it's not about food, Colin, I really don't care. Come on. Fair enough. Exactly. Fair food is wonderful. <laughs> exactly. I will say this, and I'll tell you what. Very early on in this matchup, the king seems to be in control as Joey Adams goes for high ground, but chairs have yet to come into play here. And it's going to be very interesting to see who the first man to utilize a steel chair in this matchup will be. Oh, King Tech going for that patented onside moonsault. Joey Adams catches the foot, but he catches a foot to the face for it. Oh, and now ooh, King Tech oh. off the apron, Hurricane Rana to the outside. My goodness. I think the first guy to use a steel chair, if he uses it correctly, should also be the last guy to use a steel chair, if you catch my drift. Very, very fair point from the Prince. And I, and I like Joey Adams' chance. And here we go. And he found it very quickly. It's almost as though he placed it there himself. Not saying he didn't. Now, if I'm Joey Adams and I really despise these people, I would push one out of their own chairs. And look at these fans! Oof. These fans just up and about are surrounding this matchup. My goodness, I'd want to get a close, I'd got to get a bird's eye view of this matchup as well. This is about to get very violent very quickly. I think, oh, there is a chair in there. Right On the chair! Ryan T, count of two. Now, Joey Adams, that chair's your best friend now. Don't leave him hanging, don't let him out of your sight, and don't leave him behind. Very. Until this match is over. True, and Joey Adams plows King Tech into the corner, and the size and weight advantage of Joey Adams comes into play here. Now, Joey Adams looking down at that chair. He introduced the weapon, and now he plans to use it to his full advantage. Uh, King Tech, oh, that would have been the end of things. Off the ropes, oh! Oh, my goodness. Oh! The kidney, right in the kidney, he landed on Man, the Man, that was a triple to deep left center field, folks. Wasn't a home run, but man, oh, man, did Joey Adams connect. And round one, Adams, just like you predicted. Man, oh, man. Joey. That, that chair looking a little, a little... Hanky, you, you might want. Yeah, hanky. You might want to get a new hanky. You might want to get a new chair. There, <laughs> and he's found one of the silver variety. Started with the bronze chair, now the silver chair. Maybe we'll end up with gold. He's gonna go for the gold at the end, I believe. I think so. That's what we're all here for. I'm the I here. Championship floats into another cover. Oh boy, Joey. Don't get distracted. Oh my God, Joey Adams is bleeding from the hand. I thought it was his face pain. No, and now I'm being told that the reason that Joey Adams discarded that chair is because when he went to pick it up, it had been bent so savagely by King, by hitting King Tex back, he just sliced his thumb open. Oof. And it might, well, actually it does look like it now, but- Oh my God. Man, you can't blood see blood it from this head. angle. Oh my God, look at his left thumb. And this is the opening King Tech needs. He's getting more tired with the oh. loss. Tech, Tech can bring this home right now. Oof! And he should if he can. Oh my god, though. I'm never one. We're never people that care about the well-being of Joey Adams. But I'll tell you what, end of the day, you don't want to see this. He's hurt. Joey Adams' thumb is, is just sliced open here. I, I do consider it a successful UWA lead event if everybody returns with the amount of fingers that they came with. Yes! Joey Adams what all... Is this? Oh no! Gin and tonic! If he hits it! Oh, it's a wrap! Oh, it's over! Did you see him bounce too? Ret oh, I thought that was it. Look at the blood. Look at the blood stains all over this canvas. And I think that's the only reason Tex was able to kick out. Oh, look he got a little bit weaker. He got a little bit more tired with his blood loss. Oh, my God. Look at the left hand when you can. If Joey Adams turns Tech over into a club lead. He's got to end it now. With this blood loss coming out of his left hand, he's got to end it right now. This is exactly But can he happened. hold it? Can he hold that grip with his terribly, terribly severed left thumb? Looks to be about... Oh, 70-30 with the strong hand. But yeah, and look, he had to tuck his left hand underneath. But has to break the hold. And oh my goodness. Look at the blood. 
Look at the blood, but he's smacking himself in the face with his bloody hand, and now he licks it. He's still standing. Look at his hand. He's still looking good. Oh. God. The man from Tromaville looks like something out of the, you know, Toxic Avenger right now. Oh my goodness gracious. Oof. Oof. I'll tell you what, maybe he's just like one of those animals, a rabid animal, sees his own blood and it just makes him more dangerous. But now, ooh, King Tech buries the double knees into the chest and now President oh. Dave Swan, oh, President Dave Swan over to check on the well-being of Joey Adams and Joey Adams uses it to his advantage. One one would think if chairs are legal, so would be a shot. Well, no, game. but referee Ryan T didn't see it at all. Because Dave Swan Ooh. came over to check on Joey Adams, and Joey Adams repaid that care. And here comes more more chairs. Oh my goodness! Careful, you can lose more fingers. That That's guy. a third chair and, and a fourth. fourth and a fifth. Five. How many are under there? I am six. six. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> wow. This has gotten dangerous, and you see every chair that Joey Adams picks up, his own blood stains it. His own blood has stained King Tech to some extent. Oh my goodness, and it is unbelievable to me the extent to which Joey Adams is willing to go to retain this championship. But make no mistake, the crowd here solidly behind the king, but solidly behind the king might be a stack of five chairs if he doesn't get out of this. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Power bomb! Sunset flip power bomb! Joey Adams! That has to be it. That has to be it. But he's between not the, covering look, at him. The, look at the hand! He's not covering him! No, he's going for it! This is King Tech's moment! Hit or miss, do or die! I championship on the line! The king calls for the cannonball! And he hits it! Heavy artillery into the cover. One, two, new! King Tech is the new I champion! It all came down to one cannonball. Oh! Joey Adams needs that medical attention now. Look at the blood! Look at the carnage! Joey Adams, like him or not, sacrificed everything to stay in this chairs match. But for the first time in his career, the king, after everything he's been through, after the war and the attrition of Arcadia, is the people's interactive champion. Looking around this ring with these people, I think this is the champion they deserve. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. Wow. Well, derogatory statement or not, King Tech in one of the great feel good moment in the history of UWA Elite is your I champion. The people are now represented by their king. It's Joey Adams. Joey Adams trying to show everybody in attendance why he lost, but it doesn't matter why you lost. It matters who's standing on that second turnbuckle. The fighting king is now your fighting I champion. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back with more Crossroads right after this. Our next match is scheduled for one fall. One fall. And it is for the UWA Elite Championship. Are you ready? Well, I'm ready, Prince, aren't you? I'm ready. This crowd is ready for everything else. Unbelievable, and I'll tell you what, it's not a championship match without a champion on commentary. Former UWA Elite Champion, the amazing Robbie Roller on commentary. Rob, you and you are very familiar with going head-to-head -head for the biggest prize in the game. Ladies and gentlemen, you play this. Uh, I'm pretty excited, you know, I'd be more excited if I was wrestling, but I'm working on it. With the challenger, you had chain matches. You've gone head to head for the biggest championships this company has had to offer. What does the former champion Edmund have to do in this matchup to get his title back? I think we all know what he did to me and what he gets mad at what he can do. It's just a matter of whether he's going to listen to the fans 
and play it, you know, by cheering, having them cheer for him, or if he's going to do what he needs to do to win. And, you know, I think that's what's going to make the difference in this match. So what you're saying is that what's right by the fans might not be, in this case, what's right for Hedges. That's 100% right. All right. Well, I feel like Prince might agree with you a little bit there, but it's a tall mountain to climb. The only three-time UWA Elite Champion coming through the curtain at Crossroads with the championship he feels should always have this, his face on it. Sean Damage McNellis and Prince Akhenaten, the champ, looks a little bit fired up here. By the first couple of seconds, when someone walks in that curtain, I mean, this champion has a lot on his mind, and a lot is in the ring right now, if he checks my wrist. I do, I do. Now, what do you think? Do you think, do you think he's focused? Like, he's got a lot on his mind, or do you think he's worried? Right. What, what are you reading from the champion? I'm reading a little bit of focus on it. I do want to take a minute to point out. Did you think he can sweat out of the little well? It's just hedges. Trust me, if he heard you say Joey, it's some slight but he did give his sweaty towel to the little girl. So which this little girl maybe didn't win at the balloon popping challenge. She didn't shoot the balloons off right. But she goes home with a sweaty towel. She got it! Dreams come true. We got a ton of money on eBay with that. And I'll tell you what, dreams do come true. First time in the commentary booth in three years since the days when you, Robbie Roller, were a member of Slack Game, one of the most glorious tag teams in the history of and Joey Adams' blood all over the canvas from that I championship, and if that is any indication of the grit that we're going to see out of these two world-class competitors, we're in for a good one. Hedges controls with the side headlock to open up the matchup right now, and this is a weight and power advantage, Prince Akhenaten, that Hedges will look to utilize this entire matchup. So and this illustration right there, Colin, it wasn't going anywhere. He didn't want to already go. Maybe the same thing. Yep, same thing. <laughs> and, and I hear from that hmm, that you like what you're seeing right now, Robbie Roller, out of Hedges. Absolutely. And both these men have worked upwards of 10 matches here at the Middlesex County Fair. Neither man can be 100% leading into this match, but Hedges right now dominating the physical matchup to start. Now, oh, look at the catch going for that Diamondback driver, but Sean McNellis had it scouted, but we were almost a hair's breadth away from this one being over already. Right there. Do you see that? Had him up in his finisher. Okay. Right away. What, what, what is damage time? Oh. Now he's got a headlock on for the first time. For the first time. Hedges is going to use his weight, and if he's smart, he'll use the right tactics, and he'll have his title back. So you think right now Hedges has the advantage in your mind in this matchup. You think that other than another shot of damage control from the champion, you like Hedges in this matchup? Hands down. Okay, and Prince, do you feel the same way, or do you feel like maybe Sean has that one extra trick in the book and the champion's advantage to retain here tonight? Well, Colin, I think the advantage is going to be the first guy to realize this isn't a popularity contest. I see them both pumping up the crowd. And what good is that going to do? Are you asking them to pick a winner? No, it's not. It's not who gets a lot of cheers. It's who gets that three count. So one mistake to realize, and I see another mistake by Hedges over there. Stop, that's another mistake by Damage. You can't go for the crowd, you're in the ring with one person, not all these people around the ring. Brilliant. Thank you. Now go behind in a waist slot by the champion to challenger. Damage controls now, controls the head. And when you control the head, you control the man. Damage looking for a side suplex. I don't know about all that. Now ducks the clothesline. Oh! Oh, an extra shot from Damage. Now, knee to the gut, buries it in. Now, a knee to the head. Damage, we thought was going for the discus clothesline, but instead an insecurity and Hedges reels into the corner. Damage 
damage seems to be taking a little bit too much time, and I, I, it's hard not to be pumped up by a crowd this size. Generally one of our two biggest crowds of the year here at the Middlesex County Fair. But is damage taking a little too much time here? He absolutely is. You know what, if I were, if I were a bigger guy like his, I would be a little insulted to see damage come in with an avalanche like that. Come on, that's, that's a move I should be using on you if I'm Hedges. That's true, and Hedges uses the outside shoulder to get out at a count of two. Still got a lot left in the tank. But right now, Hedges down, Damage looking for that patented worm elbow, but he catches a boot to the face, and maybe that extra added time that Damage has been taking has paid dividends for Hedges. Big, twisting, spinning neck breaker. Hedges into his first cover of the matchup, two, and the champ with his outside shoulder out at a count of two. But early on, Robbie Roller, you have to like what you are still seeing out of the challenger here, using the weight to his advantage. What did I say? That is what you said. He's a smart man. He came out and ran a mile around the ring saying hi to all the fans before the match even started. That being damage. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Hedges now with a big leg drop into the cover. Should have hooked a leg there. I feel like he should have hooked a leg there. A little bit of a nonchalant cover from the challenger, but right back in. And I actually like what I'm seeing from Hedges here, slowing this pace down. He is not the kind of guy that wants to work you fast. He's the guy that wants to grind this down to a snail's pace, hit you with power move, and keep you down on the mat. And the more the damage has to try to work himself back up to vertical, the more it plays to Hedges' advantage. As we see right there, big flapjack prints. You said it before, he can't be nonchalant. He has to be very chalant in dealing with that. Is that the opposite of nonchalant? I didn't know that. <laughs> Referee Austin Mitchell in for a count of two. Austin Mitchell been very busy tonight Just with a bunch of very important matches. Doing a heck of a job. Just like how he can't get distracted, he has to be very attractive. The opposite. Oh, I didn't, I didn't notice that. Oh, oh, oh damn it! Oh, big side suplex. Belly to back by the champion, but how much more effort? Robbie, you're a former UWA Elite Champion. Oh, 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 big thump elbow combination from Hedges. Floats into the cover, hooks the outside leg this time too, and Sean kicks out with the inside shoulder. You've been UWA Elite Champion. You beat some of the best in the game to get there. Eric Corbis, Michael Masker, so on. When you are in the position that Sean Damage McNellis is in, should Sean be worried so much about winning the right way, or should he just be worried about winning? Is it legacy? Uh, I think it's legacy. Uh, I think it's clear by what I've done in the past. Uh, you know, how many times did I retain my title against the heavy hitters, and how did I do it? By walking out and doing the smart thing. If Damage was smart, he would realize that he's outweighed. It puts him at an immediate disadvantage, and he's going against someone who already has used tactics that will help him win, whether they're fan-friendly or not. Well, that's why they say Hedges, like him or not, Hedges gonna hurt you. But Damage coming in with a kick and a knife edge chop. Backs the bigger challenger into the corner and now steps onto the second rope. And we're about to see, oh, just some heavy right hands in, but Hedges counters. Power bomb, and this might be it. One, two, high angle, no. Damage flops out, but he's looking like a dead fish on these count outs, and he's looking like he's not quite sure where he is right now, Prince. It also has to be psychological. You see all of Joey Adams' blood on, on the canvas. You have to wonder if that's coming out of you. It's not, but there is that moment where you look down and go, like, oh, that's, that's not, no, it's not. But it throws you off your game is the point I'm trying to illustrate here, Colin. And it might be throwing both of them off, but it's more likely throwing off the guy that's practically been thinking half that power bomb. Very, very true. Now, Rob, we've talking a lot. We've talking a lot. Sure, we've talked a lot about the challenger hedges. You've been in there for the UWA Elite Championship against the three-time champ Sean Damage McNellis. Why is he so successful? Why is he so resilient? I know you don't want to give a compliment to the champion. I know you don't. But give him one. What is it about Damage that makes him so successful? Honestly, he's he's got heart. I mean, do I think that heart is necessarily going to carry you all the way to the top every single time and relying on the fans to get behind you? No. No. But he, he doesn't stop. He's dumb and he gets beat up a lot. Well, 
but he doesn't stop. I, I, I mean, I think that's the key to his success. Oh, damage ducks the Polish hammer in with a knee to the, or I'm sorry, a big kick to the gut. Off the side ropes, now the knee to the gut. Discus clothesline, but damage does not get hedges off his feet. Ooh. Takes two. Usually does not take two of that big discus clothesline. But look, absolutely, and damage right now cannot take advantage right away because of the toll physically that Hedges has put on him. We are outside. By the way, we should note for you fans that are watching inside the comfort of your own home, we are outside with the humidity. It is over 92 degrees here at the Middlesex County Fair. Both these men wrestling an extreme amount of heat and discomfort. And, and if Hedges wants to win, Prince. And just has to do it by pinfall or submission. Now we know Damage doesn't want to get intentionally disqualified or counted out. That's just how he's wired. But is it extra yeah. added pressure on the former champion who won this title last year at, at uh, the Middlesex County Fair, excuse me, is there extra pressure on Hedges? And oh, Sean going for that Sambo, Hedges fighting out of it. Turns him around. It's, it's, it's equal pressure. Oh, oh Sambo for Hedges! And he hits one of Damage's signature maneuvers! And that's gotta play psychologically into what McNellis is feeling right now. Hedges into the cover. Bit of a weak cover, two count, and no damage out. But Prince, back to the question. Does that add extra pressure on Hedges, an extra psychological weight on the challenge? I think it's an equal pressure, Tom, because as you discussed, he's not going to, uh, Dynamic rather, is not going to get intentionally disqualified, intentionally counted out. That's where our heart gets you, and that's where heart is a disadvantage. Because he could have that champion's prerogative of not having to be, you know, he... Hedges oh, no, there's a genuine article! That's, that's the side effect that... Hedges usually hits. So we've seen Hedges hit the salvo that's patented damage, and now damage returns with the Hedges side effect. Oh. Hedges grabs the bottom rope. But now, Rob, the psychological warfare that we're seeing, these men hitting each other's maneuvers on each other, that's gotta be something you can't be prepared for, to be hit with your own signature maneuvers. No, it's not. You know, no one expects that. It's, it's, it'll throw you off. Very, very much. Oh, no. Oh, what no, that's his day. New champion, Diamondback Driver. I tell you. Hedges, two-time champion. Whoa. Wow. He's got heart. He's got heart. I've seen, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, one man kick out of that Diamondback Driver in the last calendar year. Sean is now the second. Unbelievable resilience by the champion. But you got to wonder, it's just over. It, it feels like it's over. Hedges has just outclassed damage thus far tonight. Look at that. Kiss of the money. It's a kiss of death. Wait. No damage goods. Damage goods. Damage hits his finisher. It's a wrap. Damage. No. And that kiss on the forehead may have been actually the kiss of death for Hedges, but the resiliency of the challenger. And look at damage. People, Rob, you know this better than anybody. Just don't kick out of the damage control. No, we don't. Which means that kiss meant nothing, and that's not a good way to get a second date. So Hedges needs to win this match, because he ain't going to get another one. Wow. Both of these men hitting their finishers on each other. Now, wait a minute. Damage going for the Diamondback driver, but Hedges oh. hits the damage control, and he hits a damn one. Holy crap, new. Oh! Wow! Man, that's what you get for trying to get cute. Wow! Unbelievable turn of events. Finisher fest 2K16. Hedges, the man hitting the damage control on the champion. Shocking turn of events, but now Hedges. And this may be where the challenger has an advantage. The advantageous nature of that mean streak that Hedges has. Pulling Sean McKellis up. Now damage, a damage comparable stand. He's fighting it though. Yeah, he's fighting it, but what else can you do? Oh man, if he hits a second Diamondback driver, this is a wrap. Nobody's kicking out. Wait, damage! Ooh, damage! Flips around, kick to the front of the head, and another damage control! Damage control is this it! One, two, yes! Sean Damage McNellis in one of the most hard-hitting, damnedest championship matches I've seen in some time, retains! Oh my goodness, Prince, what a matchup. 
mean, you're literally getting me out here, Tom. I can only imagine how these two men feel right now. I, wow. And, and I'll tell you, Robbie, like it or not, how he is right now, I know he's a longtime friend of yours. Your heart has to go out to the challenger here. Yeah, you know, I, I think that if you, if you would have played a little bit smarter and a little less towards the crowd, he would have had a lot better chance. But, I mean, that just shows you uh, damage really does have heart, and, and that is why he's successful. My goodness. A tale of two stories from a tale of two champions. Hedges fails in his rematch attempt. Hard to know when he'll see the top of the mountain again. Damage continues one way or another to be the man around here. The three-time champion retains in one hell of a contest and very interesting to see what's going to transpire here as both men get back to their feet in the center of the ring. Hmm. And that is why he did not win tonight. Wow, well say what you will, two men who for the last two years have been the co-faces, if you will, of the franchise. Current champion Damage, former champion Hedges. Man, oh man, and as SDM celebrates, he can't celebrate too hard because one of the next four men to hit this ring will win Crossroads and be next in the rearview mirror for the champion. Colin West, here with you with Chris Akinas, former UWA champion, Rocky Roller. We'll be back with our Crossroads main event. Gentlemen, the Crossroads Tournament has been won by a veritable who's who of this company. One man who's never won that man, Eric Corbis, but I don't know if Eric Corbis is here for that trophy or he's here for vindication against the wretched foes. But I will say this, one man who's not only won this tournament, but won it twice, sitting to my right, the amazing Robbie Roller to my left, Prince Akhenaten, one of the voices of this industry and one of the most dangerous men to step in a square circle in the tri-state area. Gentlemen, like these guys or not, you're going to have to admit, this might be the most stacked final four in the history of this tournament. I'm excited, Colin. When we heard Carl Cummins before, I'm commentating with us for Fireline for tonight and sure. He, uh... He wants both. He, he, he didn't even, I don't even think he cares about winning. He wants vindication, like you said. He doesn't care about a trophy. He already has plenty of outdoors in his name. But I'll tell you what, if he ends up being one of the final two, I'm sure he would not mind at all winning that trophy and getting a shot at the UWA Elite Champion. A man who feels like it's his destiny to be UWA Elite Champion again. The self-proclaimed, and as proclaimed by many, greatest to ever lace him up in this company, only wants one thing, and that's victory. Anything less would be a disappointment for this man. Absolutely not. You can take two of those trophies out of there. These four men, Kyle, Arcadia, Corbis, and Burns, giving an elbow as a particular advantage in this matchup. This is a tough one, but I'm honestly going to have to go with this man right here. Oh, chair in hand. Why not? I don't see him here. Now you wrestled, bro, you wrestled the, oh my god, it's that chair. It's the chair that ended the Garden State College last year at the fair. So it was a little bit of mind game. And it almost doesn't even look like those kids are crap. The Eric Corbis is in that ring right now because those 
greatest nemesis in this company. And the words notwithstanding, let's be honest, is Sean Evans McNellis, the WWE Elite Champion. But here is my odds on pick. I know I'm not a big fan of no one to play favorite. But good God, Bobby Lord, how do you go against the kind of beast for a match like this? Well, you see, if I was going to pick somebody else beside the match of Bose, it would have to be the beast. But, just the wretchedness is, is so much. He scares me. Yeah, like I said, you wrestled Dr. Von Bose before. You wrestled free wretched Bose. This is a completely different animal. Hold your machine. Absolutely. These four men, any one of these combinations of two in singles competition would be a dream match here in UWA Elite. We got all four in the ring at the same time. We got who is in my mind a future Hall of Famer to my right. We've got somebody I hope to see in the UWA Elite ring in the very near future. On my left, gentlemen, we're going to sit back and enjoy this ride. Simultaneously, in UWA Elite for all six years of this company have never had a one-on-one -on -one singles contest. Ever. Look at that right hand. Man, oh man. You've got Arcadia, who wants it more than anybody. Kyle, who's more dangerous than anybody. Bose, who's more unpredictable than anybody. And then the wild card, Eric Corvus, who just is a professional professional. But, oh, look at this. Catches Arcadia in the middle of the ring, hikes him up to his shoulder now, Arcadia ducks the left, ducks the right, ducks the kick, and a push kick sends the beast back into the corner. Man, there's so much action here, I can barely call it all. Thank God I got you too. Oh! Man, now you've been on, you have been on the receiving end, Robbie Roller, of Arcadia drop kick, and oh, look at the innovator! The engineer of offense, Eric Corvus, the man who you had basically the feud of the year, every show almost in 2014, Robbie Roller. How do you stop a man like Eric Corvus? How do you combat the ingenuity of this man? Honestly? Yeah. Break his spirit? Okay. Oh, just like that. I was going to say, yeah. he's been around this long. It's a little hard. Right, guys? And I, you know, breaking spirit's what I like to do. But... Oh, my God. Oh. I thought he was about to fire this carry. Corvus and Arcadia. The Bows comes in with a wretched... And you look at him, Eric Corbis has, in a way, even in this moment, gotten what he wanted. Bose is not focused on winning crossroads anymore, guys. Prince, he's focused on dismantling Eric Corbis and vice versa. So Eric Corbis, even in his current position, has won, don't you think? He's taken Bose's eyes off the prize. Oh, this is what Corvus wanted, and, uh, yeah, the way he knows, it's a victory of some kind. I don't know if you would say Bose has a moral victory, because I think you have morals for this kind of moral victory. It's debatable. Super debatable. What a knife edge south foot chop. Oh! 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 Licking the face of Eric Corvus and then a big forearm to Arcadia. I'll tell you what, the last time, the last time I tried to lick a man's face, I had to pay $2.50 a minute. You were saying his spirit can't be broken? <laughs> Let the wretchedness keep licking him. Ugh. See if he doesn't get in his head that way. That's true. Look at this sidewalk slam! Oh, and Eric Corvus could be gone as soon as he showed up. Oh, and what would it what would it do, Robbie Roller, continuing that conversation, if Eric Corvus came back, found his opportunity to get under the fire liger mask, and right away just got eliminated by Bones? What would it do to Eric Corvus? Um, I think it would honestly break his spirit. Like I said, I don't think he's capable of having that much of a loss again. 
Oof. I mean, how much more can Eric Corvus lose, though, in the last 18 months? Especially in the last six before he was retired. He lost his tag team partner. He lost the Garden State Gods. Oh, my God! Oh my God. Kind of freak the beast all over the My God. Just so you know, kids, he just picked up 6'5", 300 pounds. Like, it was just a small sack of potatoes. He is a beast. He is. That's what's so scary about Kyle the Beast. And now Arcadia and Eric Corbis trade blows on the outside. And Kyle and Bose, this is another, uh, you know, to steal one from Jim Ross. This is a Haas fight right here. Look, two big old boys. Look at that elbow drop. And everything both of these men do, Prince, everything that Bose does and Kyle does just has that extra little added edge to it. But everything's just a little bit more impactful. Yeah. I didn't know Kyle was English. Oh, English is only my second language. I don't know what you're excuse me. Oh, look at that. Right hand. Oh! The agility of Kyle the Beast with that flipping drop kick. 265 pounds up in the air like it's nothing. And here. Oh, and Kania turns around thinking he would have a respite for a moment, turns right into the lair of the beast. But Arcadia went right to him. Sure he did, because Arcadia... Oh, what a euro! He might be regretting that now. Yeah, but give Arcadia credit, he believes... Oh, no! Man, oh man, fast and furious, and we can barely call it, but these four men who know each other... Oh! Oh, that's a lot of hair to lick at once. Oh, that ended Bo's backbreaker. And what a heartbreaker it would be for Arcadia, the man who has devoted his entire year to being the man again, to scaling this mountain, to winning this tournament. And he goes out first here. Uh, three people are going to get their heartbreaker tonight. Well, at least three, I should say. Oh, no. Uh, it's that Garden State God's chair. It's the chair that ended Mike Quest in the United Wrestling Alliance. And I'm telling you right now, regardless of who else is there, there's only one man that Bose is aiming for. And it's Eric Corbis who manages to duck harm, catch the chair, puts it down on the mat, stomps the hand, big knee lift, palm strike! Careful, you get several on the No. Wait a minute. No. Corbis. Calling for it, Bose says, come on! Bose wants a minute, wait a minute! Oh my god, the wretched is re- Wait, what is that? Massacre! Massacre hits Bose! Ooh, Arcadia dropkick, springboard, Kyle, jackhammer! Nobody, nobody has a splash, but Eric Corbis has to take him out! What did we just see? We saw vindication. We saw vindication, but we also just saw a very formal declaration of Massacre's intentions. Fans, look at this visual. The legend is done. That's all I want, baby. Wednesday afternoon. He'll be, I think, strangely satisfied. Didn't win, but he's still victorious. And now, my God, look at what we're looking at. One of these two men is a Crossroads Tournament winner. One of these two men is the next challenger to Sean Damage McNellis's UWA Elite Championship. And one man leaves with nothing. Prince Akhenaten, real quick, who you got? Oh, I call this one Hard Knees and the Beast. I think I go with the Hard Knees. Arcadia. You're going Arcadia. Robbie Roller. I gotta think that right now, just by, by sheer damage inflicted, I think Kyle's the fresher man. Oof. And, and look at him, he's a beast. 
Look at the way he just jackhammered the wretched. He's oh, not a small person. Oh! But Beast goes for that leg lariat for Kenny and Ducks. Oh my god, we've seen this a million times. Springboard leg no! Oh my god! Three, no, he stacked him up and turned him over into the head. Have you ever in your life? I've never seen that coming. He's a beast. Oh my god. There's a beast and then there's another word for things like that that I don't even think is in my vocabulary right now. Unbelievable. Please rewind the tape 10 seconds, watch it back 40 times, and then when you're over it, continue. My god, now, pile up for another powerbomb, and this has got to be it. So no, Arcadia up and over. Oh, kick to the gut. He's going for it again. And this time he hits it. This time he hits it, the springboard drop kick. Two, no. Oh, goes surfing and comes off empty. My goodness. Getting in distractions there with that pinfall, Ryan T. And I'll tell you what, there's nobody I'd rather have in that ring with a blue shirt on than Ryan T. No matter what happens, he's going to get it right, ladies and gentlemen. Arcadia, Kyle the Beast. Just two of the most physically dominant and successful men in the history of Northeast independent wrestling. Forget UWA Elite by itself. For all the marbles. And I'll tell you right now, you know what's coming. Rob, you already exhaled. You know what it's like to get hit with this missile. Kyle's Springboard drop kick, but he catches it with a Euro. Oh, man. And now, just like that, Kyle back on the assault. Fireman's carry on Arcadia. Arcadia slips off the back. Kick. Four on two, three. Off the far ropes. Oh, and that's the thing. It takes one forearm from Kyle. Oh, that drop kick. Oh, my goodness. What a shot. Square. I thought that was it. Oh, uh, I flew out of my chair. I flew out of my chair. Wait, wait, Arcadia flew out of his boots. Did you see that spear? My God. I don't know what he's got left. Sheer force of will. I don't can't believe it. No, I, 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 can you blame him? No. He's put he's put away men the greatness of Arcadia with far less than he's delivered this evening. My goodness. Credit to both men, but I think as of right this moment, the beast is moving in for the kill. Game over. Game over is right. Arcadia swinging, but those swings is, are, is he hitting with anything? No, Kyle ducks the line. Ooh. Big close line of his own. And now, oh, where's he? What's he doing? Oh, we've seen this before. Roll through. Fireman's carry. Single leg. Oh my goodness. Oh no, wait, Arcadia. Roll through. No. Wait, oh god, kick to the gut. These two men know each other so well. Oh! God, what a drop kick! Oh, boot straight drop kick over the top! Arcadia! Arcadia! Hit! Oh my god, good night! Great, Arcadia not going for the cover. Pulling up the beast! No way! No way! That's got a driver! I don't know! God, I don't even know. One. Yes! We have a... Oh, my God. What? Guys. Oof. I'm great. I, I need a second. I think all the fans need a second. Rob, I know you look to be in shock here. Prince. I'm not shocked by this. I, I, I had to go with Arcadia. The beast is a person. The beast is the future. But Arcadia had to do something more tonight. My God. And with that, congratulations. Arcadia, Robbie Roller, you are here to officially welcome Arcadia into the two-time Crossroads Winner's Circle. It's just you, Hall of Famer Big Dan Wynan, and now Arcadia. Welcome to the club. My goodness. I think we'll go through perhaps the most vaunted final four in the history of this tournament. I still can't believe they put away Kyle the Beast the way that he did, and now... And he didn't run either. No. He took it head on. He sure did. But my goodness gracious, Ryan T presenting that trophy to Arcadia. And you know what? The man's put me through personal hell the last three, four months. But you can't say he didn't deserve this. He deserves every bit of it. My goodness, and now we know... Oh! We know what's on the horizon. 
and Horizon is coming to stare Arcadia dead in the face. Champion, challenger, Crossroads Trophy, UWA Elite Championship. With everything on the line. Roller, I can't wait, brother. My God, this all happens at iWrestle. Just a week away. I don't, I, you know, you got the heart of a lion in damage and you've got the mind of a veteran in Arcadia. Oh. And Arcadia refuses to engage the champion. Prince, there's no better for Arcadia to prove it right now. He'll prove it a week from now. My God. Thank you. He just proved everything he needed to prove in that ring right now. Huh? Fans, I wrestle is right around the corner, but this might just be the most historic Crossroads Supercard in UWA Elite history. For the loquacious Prince Akhenaten, the UWA Elite's former champion, I champion, tag team champion, Robbie Roller, I'm Colin West. The day is his. The night is also his. Arcadia wins Crossroads.